welcome to the session on conjugate beam method. Now, in this session, we will be trying to understand the problems on simply supported beams. In the previous session, we have learnt about the problems, how to solve the problems on simply supported, sorry, cantilever beams. Now, in these sessions, let us try to understand some of the typical problems on simply supported beam. Now, let me start with a simple example where we are going to get the derivation for the standard cases. Now, this is a standard case where a simply supported beam has been loaded with point load P or W at the center. So, let us try to find out the slope at the supports and the deflection at the center. So, we are going to see that the reactions will be equal at both the supports. First, we are going to calculate the reactions. The reactions will be equal at both the supports due to the symmetry of loading. You can find the loading is at the center. Therefore, the reactions at the supports will be equal and that will be equal to P by 2 half this side and half of the load on this side which will be acting upward. After this we are going to calculate the M by E I calculations. So, moment at the center will be equal to P L by 4 many moment and this divided by E I we call it as M by E I calculation. We are going to draw the elastic curve for this to get the slope. Then we are going to draw the M by E I diagram as shown in the figure, P L by 4 is the maximum moment at the center. Now, since we are solving this problem by conjugate beam method, we have to get the fixtures beam. Here in this case, I am going to take the reactions in the opposite direction to the loading system. As it was explained in the earlier session that the load on the fixtures beam or the conjugate beam will be the area of the M by E I diagram. So, we are not going to take this into consideration this given load on the true beam or real beam. The load on the imaginary beam will be taken equal to the area of M by E I diagram that is the loading system. So, let us try to understand that and analyze it that is what he has said here you can find out the reactions at the support which is also equal on both the sides since it is symmetrically loaded at the center A by E is nothing but moment of the area of M by E diagram you have to take. So, area will get me the load and reactions at the supports V C A and V C B will be equal and it equal to half of this load this load is nothing but half into base is L what you observe here base into height that is P L by 4. This is the area divide this by 2 so that you will get the reaction on each side. So, the finally the reactions at the supports will be equal to P L square by 16 E I. This is very important for getting the slope at the supports. So, to remember this. Now, let us try to find out the slopes at the supports. Since it is a symmetrically loaded, the slopes at A and B will be equal, whether it is A or B will be equal. Now, I will analyze for the slope at A. We are going to draw a tangential line. The direction is clockwise and as per the Assumptions that we have made in the first session, it is to be taken as negative. Let us see that. Now, shear force slope at A is equal to shear force at A of the conjugate beam. It is a conjugate beam we have to consider. Shear force at A should be taken and shear force at A is nothing but the reaction at A. These are the simple things you can remember it. 
then this is according to the theorem number one of the conjugate beam now once we know this reactions let us solve the problem and understand it with respect to the sign convention which is universally adopted all the sign conventions already were studied in the earlier session now if you are going to solve the problem from the right hand side the downward force will be taken positive shear force at any section if you are solving with from right hand side positive shear force upward will be negative if you solve the problem from the left hand side of the section the downward force will be taken negative and upward force will be taken positive now I want to get the slope at A it is nothing but reaction at A I'll try to solve the problem from left hand side I'll go from this side therefore and this reaction is acting downward so downward means you have to take negative sign so let us see that slope at A is equal to theta A is equal to minus VCA minus VCA is taken because we have assumed that it is acting downward for downward shear force the sign convention is negative so minus VCA and VCA already we calculated in the previous section it is PL square by 69 and negative I am going to remove it write it as clockwise rotation so all clockwise rotations we are assumed it as positive and anti-clockwise rotations we are assumed as po negative positive okay now let us get the slope at B this is the slope at B it is anti-clockwise we have to take positive or along with the sign convention what we are going to take here according to this also it will be positive now I am going to solve the problem from right hand side so if I take a section here this is acting downward downward is positive therefore slope at B is equal to shear force at B shear force at B is nothing but the reaction at B that is equal to VCB and VCB is already calculated and that is plus PL square by 16 EI positive sign will tell me that it is anti-clockwise and it is anti-clockwise here this is how we are going to calculate the slopes at the supports now let us calculate the deflection deflection will be always maximum at the center due to the point load acting at the center the maximum deflections you are going to get it here so the maximum deflection let us see that how to get the maximum deflection according to the second theorem of conjugate beam now deflection at C it depends on the reaction and the area bounded between A and B so this is the we are going to take a section at C maximum bending moment is at center so bending moment will be taken about the center point with respect to the reaction and with respect to the moment of the area of M by E I diagram between A and C between A and C this is the area of the minimum diagram and this area of the minimum will be multiplied by its distance you can get this distance the central distance of this moment it will act at a distance one third of this span from here to here there is nothing but L by 2 so let us calculate according to this the moment of the reaction A VCA into L by 2 that is minus sign because moment due to every downward force we are going to take it as negative the sign convention and moment due to upward force we take it as positive so it is minus VCA into L by 2 then area of this half into base is L by 2 height is PL by 4 EI it will act at a distance one third of L by 2 this is a CG point of this loading system load is nothing but the area of M by degree I am repeating again and again so get the product of this one the finally it is W this is how we go with the calculation substitution of this one take the LCM for this further simplify it and we get the final product as 
P L cube by 48 E i that is the maximum deflection at the center. If you take this as W that is W L cube by 48 E i maximum deflection is W L cube by 48 E i or P L cube by 48 E i minus sign will indicate it is a downward deflection, this is a downward deflection. This is out a standard case where a simply supported beam has been loaded with point load. Similarly, we will calculate one more uh, standard case where a uniformly distributed load is spread over its span. The span is L meters. You have got a uniformly distributed load of W per meter run. We have to calculate the slopes at the supports as well as calculate the deflection at the center. We are also since it is symmetrical loaded maximum deflections we are going to get it at the center. So, by symmetry of loading reactions are equal that V A is equal to V B that is equal to half of the load that is W into L is a point load U D L convert into point load divided by 2 it is W L by 2 that is the reaction. Calculate the M by L calculations we know that maximum bending moment at the center it will be equal to W L square by E i. Draw the elastic curve, draw the M by E i diagram since it is a second degree curve you are going to get a parabolic equation the maximum bending moment occurs at the center at W L square by 8 E i. This is a M by E i diagram. But we want to get the slope and deflection, we have to analyze this with respect to the conjugate beam. So, we have to draw the conjugate beam and analyze it. So, it is very simple as it is said earlier and according to the definitions, this is a fictitious beam, imaginary beam. I am taking the reactions downward and the load upward. This is a load diagram. The load due to this M by E I diagram, I am going to take it upward. This is an assumption I have made or you can go with other sign convention also. You can take this load as downward, this reaction as upward and solve it, there is no problem. Some books have been solved, it is solved like that. But here I am going to adopt the reactions in the conjugate beam as a downward and the low for due to loading system I have taken it upward. So, that you calculate the reactions. It is nothing but the area of M by E I diagram you have to take and divided by 2 to get the reactions. So, here you have the M by E I diagram is 2 third of base L is this is the base height is W L square by 8. This is a formula to calculate the area of a parabola and divided by 2. So, that you will get the reactions at the supports and that works out to be W L cube by 28, 24 E I. This is the reaction and this is very much useful to calculate the slope and bending moment at the center. Slopes at the supports and bending moment at the center. Now, let us see that how to get the slope. You are going to draw a tangential line here, get the rotation in the clockwise direction, just draw it and leave it. It is nothing to do, only to make you the concept understand you have drawn these lines. So, therefore, according to the definition, the first theorem of the conjugate beam, slope at A is equal to shear force at A, it is equal to reaction at A in the conjugate beam. This is the reaction. Just now we have calculated. It is W L cube by 24 E i. So, since sign convention as I explained earlier, the same thing holds good. So, slope at A is equal to minus 24 by E i that is a reaction at A. Since it is square I can eliminate this sign and write it as clockwise. Similarly, you will get the slope at B slope at B anti clockwise it is nothing but according to the definition it is the reaction in the conjugate beam at the support B. 
So, reaction in the conjugate bed P is equal to plus because downward this is downward positive downward positive from the right side we are solving the problem it is plus WLQ by 24 EI. So, we say it is an anti clockwise rotation and it is taken as positive positive shear force. Now let us calculate the deflection at the center. So, maximum deflection will occur at the center due to the symmetry of the loading and we know that it is the according to the second theorem it is a moment of the area of moment of the area moment of the reaction and the moment of the area of m by a diagram between a and c between a and c and about c. So, it is V C A into distance L by 2 and take the next the area of this one it is half of this area that is two third of this L by 2 into W L square by 8 e i and multiply it by its centroidal distance the C G will lie at a distance 3 by 8 times of L by 2 from the center if it is from the other side it is 5 by 8 times of L by 2 since we are taking moment about the center it is 3 by 8 into L by 2 we have to multiply and get, get the moment of this M by E i diagram that is half of this 2 third of L by 2 on the this span into height W L square by 8 e i its distance 3 by 8 times of L by 2. Now, substitute the value of E C A and get the products of this one take LCM and the final deflection at the center is phi WL ratio of 4 by 384 EI all these are the standard cases and we have to remember this uh, formulas uh, values which will be useful for your any of your competitive examinations. All these are the standard cases you derive it by any method this is the formula we are going to get. So, to remember for a uniformly distributed load the deflection at the center is phi W to 4 by 384 E i. Now, let us go into another problem where the slope and deflections has to be calculated at different positions along this length of the span. We will try to understand this if you understand this problem the same procedure could be adopted to solve any of the problems and if you want to know the procedure of solving another other problems typical problems you kindly look into my notes where a link has been provided. So, you can look into that you can understand better the other problems. Now, here you have a look on this one it is a simply supported beam subjected to a point load 5 kiloton at a distance 1 meter from the left support and a couple of 2 kiloton meter at a distance 1 meter from the right support. It has got a constant moment of inertia and the constant Young modulus that is a constant flexural rigidity. It can also vary I have solved those problems in the notes or we will can get it in the next video. Along with that varying sections we will try to make you understand with the Kant overhanging beams either single side or double side. Let us try to solve those problems and understand it in the next session or the in the next video. So, here the slopes are required at A, B, C, D and the deflections also at deflections that you can calculate at C and D there will be no deflection at A and B as we know earlier and we will state it here while solving the problem. As usual first in this case you have been given with E and I mega Pascals will be converted into Newton per millimeter square it is 2 into 10 to the power of 5 Newton per millimeter square convert this into kiloton per meter square this basic conversions we have already explained in many of the problems earlier problems. So, get the product of E i it works out to be 8000 kilo Newton meter square. Now, reactions at the support 
it is not symmetrically loaded therefore cannot take it off. Take moment about any one of the support that is about A I am going to take. Find out the moment due to all these forces and reactions. It is Vb into distance. It is acting anti-clockwise. All anti-clockwise moments will be put on one side and clockwise moments I can put it on the other side. So, this is anti-clockwise moment with respect to A. It is Vb into 4 plus 2 meter, 2 kiloton meter. It is also anti-clockwise. I have put it on the left hand side. Equal to, this is a clockwise moment, 5 into 1, it is a clockwise moment. Get the reaction Vb. It is 0.75 kiloton. Next, we know that sigma V is equal to 0. Va plus Vb is equal to total upward force is equal to total downward force. So, it is equal to 5 kiloton. Only downward force is 5 kilonewton. Downward force I am telling. I am not telling you with respect to the moment. So, do not take that. Take only downward force is 5 kiloton. You take only this force. So, get the value of reaction at A. Va is equal to 4.25 kiloton. Like the conditions of equilibrium, you are going to get it. Now, we know the reaction set of B is 0 0.75, reaction at A is 4.25 kiloton. Using this, let us find out the slopes at A, B, C, D. So, we are going to calculate the moment M by EL calculations. Moment at the support is force into distance is equal to 0. And say whenever you come across with a couple, already we have studied this in the earlier cases as well as in the strength of materials chapter where shear force and bending moment has to be calculated. You have to cal calculate this twice. Once you take the force into distance of this, next you take the force a moment due to this couple, the couple. So, we will take twice here the bending moment calculations. The moment at D just to the right means without considering this. It is upward. Moment due to every upward force is positive. So, Vb into 1 meter, Vb is 0.75 into 1, you will get this much. Now, consider this. So, it is also lifting up, it is added up. 2 by E i, it is added up because this is also going to be lifted up. So, whenever it sags, the beam sags, we take it as positive as per the sign conventions we have studied in the earliest session also, it works up to 2.75 by E i and moment at C is force, this force into distance V b into 3 meters, V b into 3 plus this 2, just add it, do not multiply with the distance, keep this in memory, do not multiply with distance, that take only the moment, this is the moment or we know the reaction here. It is 4.25 into distance you multiply. Take only this part. If you want to solve from here, you solve it or you solve it from left hand side. V A is 4.75 into 1 meter will get the same answer at C, moment at C. And moment at A is 0 as you know. Draw the elastic curve. Draw the M by A diagram. Plot it one by one. Moment at B is 0, it is 0. Moment at just to the right of A is 0 0.75, mark 0 0.75 and exactly at that point once again it is 2.75, there will be a vertical drop or rise due to the couples. You plot it in the same line, 2.75 and moment at C is 4.75, then you join all this by line. So, this is how you are going to get the M by E i diagram and we have to divide this into number of parts to understand and solve it. Hmm? Now, we will analyze this by the conjugate because we want to slope and deflection by conjugate beam means we have to solve it by the conjugate beam method. We are going to draw the conjugate beam here, an imaginary beam and all the statements goes as usual. Moment at A we have taken. Vcb into 4, I am going to take here 1 by 1, this is Vcb into 4 meters is the distance. 
then moment due to this triangle, moment due to this rectangle, moment due to this triangle and moment due to this triangle. All these are the loads on this beam. Now let us try to understand one by one. It is one third from here plus remaining distance you have to take. So it is half into base is 1 meter, height is 0 0.75, half into base is 1 meter, height is 0 0.175. It is acting at one third from with respect to this vertical plus remaining length 3 meter. From here to here, it is 3 meter. Let us take this area. It is also acting upward. We will take positive. So, it is equal to this distance is 2 meter into height is 2.75. This is a area. Its distance from here to here is half of this 2 meter plus 1 meter. Since we are taking moment about A, the distance is measured from here from A. You can observe it 2 into height, 2 meter into height. Acting at 2 by 2 plus 1. Next, take the area of this half into base into height. It is acting at one third of this 2 meters plus this 1 meter you have to take half into base into height is from here to here. It is 4.75 minus 2.75, you will get the distance. It is 2 that distance has to be multiplied into one third of this distance plus 1 meter. Now, take the last part. So, it will be acting at a distance equal to two third of this 1 meter. Two third of 1 meter. Get the value of the C V C B. Simplify all these things each component, we are getting this final value of the reaction as 4.04 by E i acting downward. Assumption, we have made it downward. So, that is what I plotted here. And we know sigma v equal to 0, v a plus v b that is v c a, c I called it, I have designated here to say that it is a conjugate beam reaction of the conjugate beam at A, reaction of the conjugate beam at B, that is the notation I have used. C will indicate conjugate beam. So, it is equal to total downward force is the area, we do not get this one into consideration. It is a total area of all these diagrams half into base into height plus this area 2 into 2.75 plus area of this triangle plus the area of this triangle will be the loading half into base into height. All these areas are the areas of this individual components whatever are marked here with the different colors. This is the load not this one, this is not the load, this is the load for the conjugate beam. Get the final output of this one the total downward force will be upward force will be equal to 9.5 by EI and the reaction at A in the conjugate beam is 5.46 by EI, this is the reaction at A. These two values will be important to calculate the slope at A and at B. So, now we know the reaction at A was B, reaction at A in the conjugate beam these two values are to be, will be used in our calculation. Now, go with the slope, slope at A as usual, it is a shear force at A and shear force at A is nothing but the reaction at A in the conjugate beam and that was equal to sign convention, it goes the same as we have explained earlier. Slope at A is equal to reaction at A and since reaction it is downward, it is downward is taken as negative, therefore it is minus V C A, substitute the value of E C A, it is 5.46 by E I. Already we have calculated the flexural rigidity E I and it is 8000 kilonewton meter square, 
divide by that you will get it as minus 6.825 into 10 power of minus 4 radians. Convert this radians into degrees by multiplying it by 180 degree and dividing it by pi radians. You will get this in terms of degrees. It is 0 0.0931 degree clockwise rotation. This is a clockwise rotation will be there. Similarly, get the slope at B. It is not symmetrical. It says that according to the theorem that it is the shear force at B and shear force at B is nothing but reaction at B in the conjugate beam. So, reaction at B was equal to 4.04 and that will be divided by E i. You will get 5.05 10 power minus 4 radians. Convert that into degrees by multiplying by 180 degree dividing it by pi radians and this is anti-clockwise rotation, anti-clockwise. Now, let us calculate the slope at C. We are going to draw a tangential line here at C, this angle made at C. So, let us find out the slope at C. Slope at C is nothing but the shear force at C. You have to take the shear force due to this reaction which is acting downward already we know the sign convention this we are going to take this as positive and this one as negative the area bounded by that so it is minus vca plus the shear force due to this load area of this one so it is half into base into height half into base into height 4.75 we are going to get the slope at C as minus 4.169 in 10 power of minus 4 radians. Convert this into degrees. We are going to get 0 0.024 radian or degrees. This will be the slope. Earlier we have got the slope at this point which was much more than that. Maybe around 0 0.039 something like that. Hmm? We will go just go back and we can refer it. Now, you can also calculate the slope at D. Slope at D, you are going to draw an horizontal line, draw a tangential line at D, measure this angle. This angle will be equal to by calculation, it is equal to shear force at D. This is the shear force at D. That means, it is the due to the reaction at B in the conjugate beam and due to the area between this D B that will be the reaction. Now, when you come to from right hand side, the sign convention will be different. Upward force is taken as negative and downward force is taken as positive. That is the sign convention we have adopted in the beginning itself as well as universally adopted. Therefore, it becomes V C B in the positive sign and this area of this triangle with the negative sign. So, after calculating this theta D, it is 4.58 in 10 power of minus 4 radians. Convert this into degrees by multiplying it by 180 and dividing it by pi. So, we are going to get it as 0 0.0268 degrees. That is the slope here. The slope at this point is 0 0.024. Next, we will calculate the deflections at A, B, C and D. Deflections at A and B are 0. So, moment about this inch or moment about the roller will be equal to 0 moment at those points. Therefore, there is no deflection. So, no deflection at A and B. Let us calculate deflection at C and D here. So, deflection at C it is nothing but this is a deflection it is nothing but the moment of the reaction at A and the moment of this area about C. So, let us calculate the moment. It is minus V C A into moment due to every downward force is negative. It is minus V C A into 1 meter and moment due to every upward force. This is an upward force about this you are going to take. So, it is half into base into height acting at a distance one third of this 1 meter. So, it is with a positive sign. So, kind of find the deflection. 
after calculating all this thing, substituting the reaction VCA, we are going to get 4.75 by EI and EI is being substituted with 8000 kiloton dash meter square which is the fluctual rigidity of the beam section, mm, EI section. Now, you are going to get that equal to 0.594 mm downward. So, here the deflection will be 0.584 mm. deflection at C. Similarly, we will calculate the deflection at D. This is the deflection. Let us calculate that with respect to this and it is at D we are going to take. Moment about this D. It is due to the VCB. Moment due to every downward force is negative acting downward and here moment due to this area we have to take. about this point D, it is one third of one meter. So, it is positive half into base into height, half into this base into this height is 0.75 acting at a distance one third of one meter. Get the product of this, it is 3.915 by EI, EI is once again substituted, we get that equal to 0.489 meters sorry mm 0.489 mm in terms of meters it is 4.89 10 power of minus 4 meters. So, this is a deflection at D deflection here it is more deflection at D it is less due to the given loading system. Hope you understood the concepts of finding out the slope and deflection at various section in the beam. The same procedure could be adopted for the other problems and all the problem many of the problems have been solved in my notes and a link has been provided in the YouTube. Kindly go through that. If you find any difficult please text me, we will answer all your queries. If you are not subscribed yet, kindly do subscribe now to my channel to get more videos on this educa educational information. Thank you for watching this video.